Oh, well that was not cute. Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Kyra, and I make videos on tips, tricks, and organization for living in small spaces. And today's video is all about how to live in a studio apartment with your boyfriend. <sighs> So I've lived in a studio before my current studio and in that studio I lived alone. Now we recently moved to Chicago and we are living in one studio apartment together with my dog. It was really easy for me to figure out how to live in a studio as one person. I mean, it's basically just a one bedroom without the bedroom, but when it's just one person, like more or less have room for all of your stuff. But when you have two people, you have got to get so much more creative and just really learn little tips on what to do so that way you aren't stepping on each other's toes. So the first, and probably most important tip I have for you is to get a white noise machine or something that will help you sleep. If you have never used a white noise machine, maybe start by using like the apps on your phone or something so that way you get used to the noise and start liking it. But find something that makes noise that you can sleep to so that way you don't hear everything else. Because when you're living in a studio, you'll hear everything. And my boyfriend and I are on two completely different schedules. I wake up around 5.45 every morning. He wakes up at 7.30. I go to bed around 9.30. He goes to bed around 11.30. So we had to figure out some different ways that we could live in the same space and not completely drive each other bonkers by waking each other up while the other person is sleeping. A white noise machine helps a lot. So we don't use an actual white noise machine. We have a fan that makes a pretty loud noise. And so when I go to bed at 9.30, I turn on that fan and it drowns him out a lot. I don't hear him a lot of the time because he stays up until 11 playing video games and like talking to his friends on his headset while I'm trying to sleep. But with that fan on, it makes it slowly. I really can't hear him that much. And and then in the morning when I get up, we leave the fan on. I teach English really early in the morning, so I leave the fan on while I do that. My next tip is to get a good set of headphones. I really recommend getting a pair of Bluetooth headphones, that way you're free to roam around your apartment. But getting a good set of headphones is really important because if I wake up on a Saturday morning at 7.30 in the morning and I know he's gonna sleep in until 11 a.m., I can put in my Bluetooth headphones and listen to music or podcasts or have TV playing off of my computer and I can listen to it fully, but he doesn't have to hear it. And it can just be really comfortable for me that I can now sit on the couch with my coffee and watch TV on my computer and he doesn't have to hear me. It's really just finding like compromises and ways around each other. One of the most annoying things about living with someone in a studio is you already have no space, but now in your tiny sink, because I don't have a dishwasher, I have double the amount of dishes. For our tiny washer dryer unit, I do double the amount of laundry. And when I fold our laundry, like it's in the middle of our living room and there's literally nowhere else for me to put it except for away. It's not like I have like a laundry room or something where like clean clothes can stay. You just have to expect your place will get messier a lot quicker if you're sharing it with someone. But as long as you know that and you guys are both on the same page, just make the conscious effort to keep it a little bit cleaner and it works out. We've gotten pretty good at organizing our place that he feels like he has his own space. I have mine. At nighttime, he'll sit in front of this TV and play his video games on the TV. And I just sit on the couch and watch regular TV on my computer because it doesn't bother me if it's on the smaller screen and that way he can play. You just have to make little compromises and sacrifices to be able to make it work. But in the end, like it's super worth it and if you're saving money on not getting a one bedroom then I highly recommend it. I feel like something that could potentially be an issue is if you're fighting or something you don't have anywhere else to go. I can't go into the bedroom and slam the door. I guess I could go into the bathroom and slam the door but that's not a comfortable place to pout. If you need space from each other it's literally like where are you gonna go? At my apartment building, we have a really nice rooftop and we have a really nice lobby. So if I need to take a breather, like I could go to the one of those places. This doesn't really happen to us, but I can see how that would be really frustrating for people. Sometimes people just need like their own quiet space. And if that's you, then living in a studio with your significant other is gonna be hard. You don't have a lot of quiet space. You don't have a lot of space in general. So you don't have a lot of room to be able to go to get away. You'll just have to make a conscious effort to find ways to adapt and feel like you're still getting your alone time that you need. I work from home and I'm alone all day during the actual day so it doesn't bother me like I'm really only around other people when he comes home at night so for me it's perfect but if you're around people at work all day and you want to come home and just like decompress and be by yourself it could be a little bit challenging you'll just have to figure out how do you put up those boundaries. Another boundary that I think is really important when you're living with a significant other in general but especially in a studio is you need to make sure that there's an equal balance of work. Every night I cook dinner but Alex will do the dishes and honestly like bless him because 
doing the dishes in our tiny sink is such a pain in the butt. Like, I do the laundry and fold it because I'll do that while I'm sitting here watching TV on the couch, but he'll help me put it away. So it's just like knowing what you do and knowing what your jobs are in the relationship, I think helps because then there's not this constant back and forth of, well, who's gonna cook dinner tonight and who's gonna wash dishes? If you more or less know who does what, then it's just one less thing for you to fight about and be more at an ease of mind because you know your responsibilities. The last thing about living with a significant other is you have double the amount of stuff in the same amount of space. So this is about the same amount of space that I lived in in Arizona. I now have to fit my stuff and his stuff. That doesn't sound that bad. Most people just think, oh, it's just clothes. And yeah, that's true. But now we have to have two dressers and we do have to split our closet, which is a little bit hard. But then you have random items. We have two suitcases. We both travel oftentimes together and need two suitcases. Where are you going to put two of them? We have his golf clubs, which are huge. Where are those gonna go? We needed to find places where these items could all fit in a apartment that doesn't even have a bedroom. So you have to get creative and you definitely have to prioritize and know it's an equal balance. Both people are trying to figure out where they can put their own stuff. It's not like one person is trying to completely take over the place. So just compromise, figure out some storage solutions. There's so many things you can do to be able to store your stuff creatively so that way it works. Whether it's putting your TV on top of your dresser in the living room or storing stuff under your bed. There's different creative things you can do, but it will take some brainstorming. Again, I love living in my studio with my boyfriend. It's never felt too small for us. It's functional and we love it and it's small and it's cozy and we're in the heart of the city and we could have gotten a one bedroom somewhere further out for the same price, but to us it was so worth it to live right in the center of the city, pay that same amount, but live in a smaller space because for us it doesn't matter. Like we want to be with each other. We like spending time together. I love living in a studio with him and no part of me wishes that we got no one bedroom at this time. If you're moving into your studio with your significant other. I hope this helped you. If you have any questions or anything or any other advice I can give you, definitely comment down below and let me know. If you haven't already, please hit the big red subscribe button. I post videos on tips, tricks, and organization for small space living. And if you like this video, definitely give it a thumbs up. Also, be sure to follow me on my Instagram where I post a lot of content that doesn't always make it up onto YouTube. Thanks so much for watching guys and I'll see you next time.